Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood master Alan. And today I'm going to teach you three kata. Now, this form is a really, really big jump in complexity from the previous forms you've learned up to this point. And so you want to pay really close attention to your feet as we go through this form to make sure you're in the correct stances and you're pointed in the correct directions. So three kata is really going to challenge your balance and your, uh, your body control in a way that your previous forms haven't. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of times this is the very last thing people learn in Greenville. And we're going to open, I'm going to show you the whole form, and then we're going to break it down step by step. So if you come back to this video, you'll be able to see the form right at the beginning. And if you've already done three kata several times and you just need a refresher, or if you're you know, a much more advanced belt and you forget a piece or you feel like you got something backwards, then you'll be able to reference it here. So here we go. Let's get rolling. dive in. So three kata, the salutation is going to be open hand. So I'm going to bow, step out to my horse stance, and I open the hands as I step out. Then upward cross block, and I bring the hands back down. <laughs> All open hand throughout. One kata and two kata, fists. Four kata, fists. Three kata and five kata, open hand. Ready? Bow. Step out, hands open. Upward cross block, bring it down. <laughs> now, I'm going to go back to a T-guard. So first I step to a cat stance, and then as I'm doing that movement, my arms are going to circle to do a T-guard pointed in front of me. Now if you notice the way my body's sort of moving, I'm clearing this space next to me. And so I could think about this as a guard position, I could think about this as a block or a deflection. There's a lot of different things that could be happening in the form right here. Once you have the whole thing, you start to go back and you look, okay, I like to think about this attacker doing this, so then that means this movement is this, and you start to piece together the story of the form. Step one, you gotta learn all the moves. And then step two, you've gotta get good enough at those moves that you can do the form without having to think about it. And then starting to look at all the different possible applications is basically what you spend the rest of your life doing with every form, even one venue. So here's how this movement works from the side. So from the horse stance, I'm gonna go back to a cat stance. And my arms are gonna circle. So I've got this hand high on guard, I've got this hand out in front of me on guard, and my elbows are close to bent 90 degrees each step, each way. All right, if my fingers reach to infinity, they would meet at a right angle as well. So ready? Bow, step out, salutation. I go back to the cat stance. Now I'm gonna catwalk forward. And so this stance right here, where I start to do a catwalk movement. So I push through the ball of the foot on the back of the foot. I accept the weight on the front leg. I've got both my knees bent. Front foot is pointed at about square to the side wall. This stance is very important and very critical to three cotton. So if you have trouble with your balance here, make sure you spend the time to really, really hone this before you go too deep into this form. Now, I catwalk. And so this stance, you can call a catwalk or you can call a reverse cat stance. I'm gonna transition into a ridge hand block out to the side. And so ridge hand block, I've got the thumb tucked, ridge hand block with the other hand. Notice this hand comes to elbow position. So again, I go back, cat, T guard, catwalk, right hand, left hand, I step, spear hand poke to the inguinal crease, that's my right hand. So now I've got my right foot forward and a half moon stance, left hand spear hand poke to the throat, and then I'm going to put my hands up on guard and do a front ball kick to the solar plexus, land and a half moon stance. So we start the form, horse, cat stance back, T guard, catwalk, block right, block left, 
and those are both bridge hand blocks. And so then as I step to this half moon stance, my hands got to flatten out for the spear hand hook to the groin, spear hand hook to the throat. My hands come up on guard front ball kick, land in a new half moon stance. That front ball kick goes out to the solar plexus. So this is the first sequence. Run this one a couple of times. The very next movement is gonna be really familiar. We're just taking something that you've already learned previously, that you did it left-handed, now you're gonna do it right-handed. See you in a second. From the top, bow, salutation, cat stance, catwalk, block, block, step, poke, poke, hands on guard, front ball kick. And now we're gonna to pivot to the rear. So I do a V-step, just like the end of one column. My right foot comes in and out to a half moon stance. And so if you remember in one kata, right before we've got the side kick back fist simultaneous, there's a B-step where we block number two block back to knuckle to the chin. Well now three kata, I'm gonna do that same thing, except I'm starting with my left foot forward. And so my right foot traces that letter B. I block out to the side with a number one block and do a back to knuckle punch back towards the center. And so I bow, step out, back, catwalk, front kick, pivot to the rear, block, back to knuckle. And I'm going to leave you there because this next part is the most challenging part of the form, or at least the most athletically complex piece to this form. And I want to make sure you're ready before we start that. Now we're going to add back-to-back -back kicks that are really balanced and flexibility uh, intensive. So the first is called an iron broom leg sweep. And the second is called a scissor kick. So for the iron broom, what we're going to do is it's like a roundhouse kick, but we're kicking down low and doing a 270 degree circle. And so what happens is that I go from that half moon stance where I had the back to knuckle punch out pointed towards the back. And so this is what my stances are going to do. I started with my right foot forward in a half moon stance. I'm going to kick through to get to my right leg back in a half moon stance. And so again, from that half moon, this is like a roundhouse kick, but instead of pulling it back into a flamingo, I'm going to crank through it with my hip to come all the way around. But right now, as you practice this, I want you to stay upright because that'll help you work on the balance. But eventually, you're going to get to where you lower your altitude, really, really kick through. That'll help your leg reach out longer, and it gets you a whole lot more uh, velocity as you snap around. So upright, this is what you're going to do. A lot of times, I start by pivoting this foot. And so I pivot this foot to then kick through to come around to that half moon stance. You want to get really, really comfortable with that pivot upright before you start to go low. If you do this wrong, it can be really rough on your body and especially hard on your knee and your ankle. So you want to make sure you've got the rotation down before you drop your height with it. So again, the iron room, I've got block, back to knuckle, I kick through and land. So what that's going to look like when I do it low, and I kick all the way through. Really difficult to show slowly. Now that's gonna bring us to the scissor kick. And so I wanna show you this from the side for just a second. If I start, I originally had to block back to knuckle punch face in this way. I turn 90 degrees so that you can see how my body's moving differently. So I've got the block back to knuckle. Now, I do the iron broom, I kick through. From here, I'm gonna do a scissor kick. So a scissor kick, I'm gonna jump up. My right foot kicks out and forward, and my left foot kicks back with a back kick. And so I've got a front ball kick going this way, I've got a back kick going this way, and then they swing back. And so I jump out, in, down. And that's a lot of steps to do while you're in the air. So in the air, you're jumping up and doing them simultaneously. In terms of application, the way a scissor kick works, I'm gonna jump and I swing either the front kick forward, hit the person in front of me to push off of them to drive into the back kick to the person behind me, or I jump 
put the back kick on the person behind me to launch myself forward more into the front kick. So in the air, it looks like they happen simultaneous. In practice, you can't do it that way. In practice, as you're jumping up, you dig your foot into something to drive the other foot out. And so then you end up like you sort of hit and then push through so that you can then hit and recover and land. And so hitting something with a scissor kick is actually a lot easier than just jumping up in the air and doing a scissor kick. So from the iron broom, and we'll orient this correctly in just a second. But so I take the iron broom, I kick myself through. For the scissor kick, I'm either gonna start from back here, jump, scissor kick, land. And some people prefer to start from the half moon stance. Other people are much more comfortable taking this right leg, pulling it in, and doing the scissor kick from here. It can be a lot easier to get height on your jump if you're like this. I find this to be easier to get the hip rotation where you swing the legs, but everybody's gonna be different, and so you have to practice both. But here's the trick. If you practice a bunch of scissor kicks over and over and over and over again, especially as you start to get tired, it's really easy to do something to your body where you can injure your knees, your ankles, your feet, okay, even your back. And so you want to make sure with your scissor kick, you don't want to do a whole bunch of them in a row, okay, because after just a few, you're really increasing your chance of injury without giving yourself a whole lot of benefit. The scissor kick is something you need to be able to be patient with. So you'll work on it, take a break, work on it, and it's, it's going to take an extended period of time and consistent practice to get good at it rather than just going in and saying, all right, I'm going to spend two hours on this. I'm going to get my scissor kick down today. That's a great way to practice some things. It is not a great way to practice the scissor kick. Now, if I do it from here, I've got the right leg back. I'm gonna jump, my right leg goes out and forward, my left leg goes back, and then I swing it back. If I pull my feet together, so I have the block back to knuckle, I do the iron broom, I suck the foot in, and then I'm gonna jump and scissor kick. Either way, I land right leg back. Now, as we move through the rest of three kata, instead of doing the iron broom every single time and the scissor kick every single time, I want you to make a modification. So we bow, step out, salutation. I go back to my cat, tea guard. Cat walk forward, ridge hand block, ridge hand block, half moon stance, spear hand poke, spear hand poke, 
hands on guard, front kick. Pivot to the rear, block back and oval. Iron broom, notice I'm not gonna get low. And then front ball kick with the right foot, land back with the right foot. Now I'm gonna step, draw into a cat stance, eight block down. So I wanna be in a cat stance square to this wall, eight block down, back up, Make sure your body's in a powerful shape. This next sequence in three kata, it's gonna be very critical that you got your cat stances down. So if I start that from here, block back to knuckle, iron broom, scissor, except I do a front kick, land, block, and key up. Then, step, turn, block. Add that and make sure you're working this with a front kick before you do the next piece. Okay, so the scissor kick, I do my kick, I land down and I block and I key up. I step, turn, cat, eight block. So I should be square to this wall. Now I'm gonna catwalk. So as I catwalk, I take the back foot, I push through the ball on my foot. This foot turns 90 degrees. I've got both knees bent. And I'm gonna take my tiger claws and I want them to point square to the front and back wall. And so my right hand comes up and across, it's gonna be in front. My left hand comes up and tucks in, it's gonna be closer to my body. And I want the center of my palm, almost like I've got a laser beam extending out, square to the wall, same thing on the left side. And so I'm gonna cat, I got my knees bent, back up straight, claws up, once again, then, a couple of these things can happen, end up happening together. I'm going to break it down. Look, step, reach, draw into a cat stance. So again, look, step, reach, draw in. And so if you look at it from the side, it was here in a cat. Originally I was facing this way. I've turned it 90 degrees so that you can see. Twist. So I've got my claws pointed that way. Step, reach, draw in. So from the block, catwalk, reach as you step, draw in. As you start to build the story of the form, that's gonna decide how your footwork times with your hands in this sequence. Because I can go twist and then look after, or I can look as I'm twisting, I can reach as I'm stepping, or I can reach, step, draw in. And so the, the timing of those things, the pieces can fit a lot of different ways. I gave you the, the easiest way to make sure your body kind of coordinates, but after you've gotten comfortable with it, if you want to adjust the timing a little bit, you can. Because all those steps have to happen, and they have to happen together. On to the next one. We're about to the midpoint of the form. So, I have my cat stance block. Twist, reach and step, draw in. Now I'm going to do the same catwalk, and my hands are going to come across my body. But this time, it's Immortal Men. And so, I catwalk. Immortal man. I've got my fingers pointed to the far walls. It's almost like a, uh, almost like a, an old west gunslinger. And then I step and reach as I look, the same as we did with the last one. And I want this to snap out, pointed in that direction. And it's almost like you're holding on to a bow. So I want my fingers to be lined up with each other. Like I'm pulling back the arrow with this hand, and this one is pointing in the direction that arrow is going to go. So I was here, boom. Boom, and then I draw in. Notice I've got this back, but my shoulder's not up, my shoulder's down, fingertips out. Ready again, lock, twist, twist. So I'm using that reverse cat stance again. And that's right at about the midway point. So run this a couple of times, be really good at your balance throughout those cat stances, and we're about to challenge you one more time. Let's finish strong. So I'm gonna step from my cat stance into a half moon stance and block with number two block. I'm here, I step, two block. Dragon hook. 
Then I'm going to bring this hand up on guard. I do a front ball kick out with my right leg. That goes to the solar plexus. The hands come up on guard, back kick straight back, flamingo back up, and now I'm going to drive a side kick out towards the front and land in a side horse stance. So I was here. I step, block, hook, hands on guard, front ball kick, back kick, side kick, land. And that's our next piece. So this is a little bit like what we asked you to do in two kata, but it's more difficult because you got to do three directions and maintain your balance instead of just two. But you get to take the back kick transition to the side kick from two kata, and we just add a front kick on the beginning of it. So if this part gives you a lot of difficulty, visit two kata again, really focus on that section of the form, and that'll help you work on your balance. Plus, it'll be good for your two kata. So let's start from the archer. I step, block, hook, kick, land. Now my attention is going to point to the back of the room, and I'm going to do that same circling T guard that we did at the beginning of three kata. And as my arms circle, my left foot crosses in front. So I'm going to cross stance, facing the back, with my hands up in a T guard, just like we did at the beginning of the form. Block, hook, front, back, side, land, right into that cross stance and T guard. Now make sure you don't want your feet parallel, they're actually perpendicular. And I'm not trying to put my feet on a balance beam. You should be able to see I've got my feet, one foot is sort of slightly in front. I'm going to go from here, this leg that's crossed in front is going to throw a side kick. And so I throw that side kick with my left leg, boom, cross, cover, T-guard again. Now the balance for that kick gives a lot of people some difficulty because we haven't asked you to throw a kick from across in front. But this is all your body's going to do. So I'm in that cross stance at the beginning. This leg is going to kick. And then it lands down. And so this sequence, this is all you're doing with your body. Kick, land. Kick, land. And so from the T-guard, I throw the kick, boom, and then land, circle, T-guard again. Now this last sequence is going to be pretty lengthy. We're going to bite it off all in one piece. So make sure you're good up to this point before you do the next section. Two sections left. I'm going to do this facing in this direction because it's going to make it easier for you to follow along. But all of this happens pointed to the back of the rope. So I have done the cross stance T-guard side kick, cross cover, T-guard. I'm going to block out with the left hand and my left foot opens kind of like I'm moving through a fighting stance. So that left foot opens just a little bit. Now the right hand is gonna throw a leopard paw out to the armpit. That happens before I step. So I go from my side horse, block, open, leopard paw, and now the right foot is gonna follow. So the right foot steps through. Then the left arm is gonna drop an elbow strike. And so the elbow happens, that's a backwards elbow, and the left foot steps through so that I should now be in a horse stance again. Left foot forward, horse stance, T-guard, block, turn the foot, leopard, step, spinning elbow, step, end up in a side horse stance. And now I'm gonna do a tiger claw up into the groin, and the left hand is gonna scoop to take the person down. So that's gonna reap their legs out, and then my right hand is gonna throw a knife hand strike down. From here, block, turn the foot, leopard, take a step, elbow, take a step, claw comes up, take down, chop. So let's point that in the correct direction. So from the cross stance, T-guard, side kick, cross cover, block out, leopard paw, step, spinning elbow, step, tiger claw comes up, scoop, Chop. That is an excellent spot for a key on it. So work just this piece five to ten times before you start the form from the beginning. So do just that section because once you get comfortable with this, it's going to really snap out there. This will fly. We got to work on it for that to happen. 
end of the form. So we've got cross stance, T guard, side kick, out, cross cover, block, leopard, step, spinning elbow, tiger claw up, scoop, knife hand. Now, my next attacker is coming from this direction. So as this comes in, I'm going to block and I'm going to pull my body away. So what I'm going to do with my body is called a layout stance. And it's a little bit like a cast stance, but the differences are what are important. So if I start here, when I pull this part of my body away in a cat stance, so I'm going to leave my arms to the side so you can see, this part of my body moves a little bit, but I want to be able to move that part of my body away more. So if this person's coming in with a kick or something like that, something that's got a lot of reach, I want to be able to pull this way away, farther away than the rest of it. So this is a layout stance. It's a lot like a cat stance, but I have all my weight on the back leg instead of most of my weight. So cat stance, I've got like 95% of my weight on the back leg. A layout stance, I've got no weight on my front leg. I've got everything on the back leg. So at the same time, I come from the knife in strike and block out and across. So what that's gonna look like in the form, I did the tiger claw, scoop, chop, Turn my eyes, layout stance, seven block. And then out to a half moon or a forward leaning, and I'm gonna push pull front two knuckle punch to the groin. So once again, claw, scoop, chop, layout stance, seven block, step, front two knuckle, then, the right leg comes in, horse stance. We do our end salutation and bow. That was three kata, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna show you the whole form. And so you can see the whole form from the beginning, from the end, and revisit this video as often as you need to. If you need a refresher, you lost something, you're learning it, you're practicing it, or whatever. This is here to help you. I hope it worked out. Thanks everybody for joining me on three kata. I'm gonna show you the whole form here again in just a second after the cut. And so you can see the whole form at the beginning of this video and then again at the end. And revisit this as often as you need to if you need reminders or help practicing or uh, even if you're, you're really comfortable with the form, sometimes when you watch it, you'll pick up details that you didn't realize were there that you missed your first time through. I'll see you again soon.